when someone grabs a seat across the table and sits down. I'm so sorry for being late, Erica. The traffic going here is just crazy, and parking was just... Tails off. Parking, uh, pausing to wipe the sheen of sweat from his forehead. I stare at Richard. Still unsure whether to feel a bit irritated for him making me wait again, or just look at him. He's wearing a semi-fit polo shirt, jeans, and sneakers. His hair looks a bit longer than the last time I saw him at the wedding, but he looks boyish and definitely younger than his day age. But there are shadows under his eyes like he hasn't slept all that much. He smiles timidly at me and I press the remnants of my cigarette down on the ashtray. So, what's up? He asks, watching me remove the embers from the ends of the cigarette. Oh no. Small talk again. I'm fine. Okay, just the usual work. Great. Where did all those well thought out lines go? Am I just going to be rendered incoherent all throughout the night? You look great. <laughs> Sure, if I should be his gaze. Thanks! You look! My voice trails off, finding the right words to say. Richard absently scratches his head and laughs. Yeah, I look like crap. <laughs> I haven't been getting much sleep for the past couple of weeks. Oh, what have you been doing anyway? I haven't heard a peep from you since, well, well, since you know when. <laughs> he doesn't speak for a few minutes. I begin to think that I should have brought up, shouldn't have brought up that incident when everything got so messed up. Can I ask you something, Erica? I nod what? timidly, not trusting myself to speak. Don't I matter to you anymore? I feel my face but His words bring up a myriad of emotions inside me, some of which I thought I'd already dealt with. Okay. Granted, I did something really bad. Cut him off before he says anything else. You walked out on me all those years ago, Richard. You just decided right then and there that our relationship would never have worked by a long distance. So you thought, oh, spare me the trouble. I, I don't intend for those words to sound like fingernails scraping a blackboard, but it's too late to take them back. I'm ready to unleash the fury of words tucked under my tongue, but for some reason his eyes stop me. They always do. You didn't even ask me how I feel. You just decided for yourself and left without a backward glance. Tell me. Tell me how I was supposed to feel after that. And then, and then you just sashed away your way back into our lives ten years later, and you asked me if you still matter to me? The last sentence comes out a bit of an octave higher. Thankfully, we're in an open area, and everyone else is just engrossed in their own conversations. Richard just sits there, watching me fume and get all worked out, his face unreadable. Do you have any idea what I've been through since then? I laugh. I felt like, I felt like someone punched a hole in my chest and I was just walking around with that gaping hole. My lower lips start to tremble. Oh no, don't you dare cry, Erica. Erica, I... I hold up my hand. I try to control this dam of emotions that's threatening to burst. I take several deep breaths and hold myself back a little bit, clasping my hands on top of the table. That thing with... That thing with Jerome, as you heard from the horse's mouth himself, was something I went along with just because I couldn't face everyone after all this time. I'm so... stuck. I'm still walking around with a gaping hole. I know it was a stupid idea to begin with. I just wanted to feel... Normal. Oh God. I've never felt so pathetic in my entire life. I, I feel smaller than the time I spilled everything to the barcada. No matter how many times I try to justify what I did, it still sounds vain and stupid. And now I've slayed the cards on the table. Even Richard knows how utterly crappy I've become. I don't even dare look at him. I don't want to see his pity or disgust in his eyes at what I've become. His silence makes me believe the worst. Which is why I get surprised when I see his hands move across the table to cover my... I'm really sorry, Erica. I know that's a hollow thing to say after everything you told me, but 
I don't know what else to say. There's no way to repair the damage I've caused, but I still want to let you know why I just left. I owe you that at the very least. I want to tell him that nothing he'd ever say would take back all those years of self-imposed loathing and blaming, but I surprised myself even more by, by nodding. I got that. I got that offer to work in Singapore even before we graduated. <laughs> I didn't tell anyone back then because I may have second thoughts about leaving. I didn't want to leave you, but my family needed me. My mom was undergoing chemo treatment for breast cancer and she had to get operated soon after graduation. I didn't really have much of a choice. This time around, it was Richard who could look at me. I just wanted to save my mom, and that offer turned out to be the answer I was looking for. My sisters were still in school at that time, and I knew after graduation, I'd have to hit the ground running to help out. I didn't tell anyone, because I know you guys would help out. He laughs, and combs his fingers through his hair. It may sound conceited, but... I wanted to do this on my own for my family. I'm the breadwinner, so I have to be the one to work things out, and there's another selfish reason. I look up to see him staring at me intently. I wanted to prove myself to you, too. I could never measure up to your family's standards, so I needed to make a name for myself. I wanted to be a good provider for you when that time came. That's the reason why I came back. Because I'm ready now. That doesn't make sense to me for some reason. But, but that time you said you had someone in your life, I thought... I was talking about you, Erica. It's always been here. Paige, drop.